Hello and welcome to ETBFSI.com. My name is Amol Dete and you're watching Fintech Diary. In this particular episode, I have with me Amit Goel, who's the expert in fintech. He's an investor, he's a content guy, and he understands fintechs really well. He's also investing in early stage startup fintechs. Amit, glad to have you. Thank you so much, Amol. So Amit, first of all, I just want you to tell me what is happening with the fintechs today. Uh, we have thousands of fintechs coming to the Global Fintech Festival. There are dozens of fintechs which are unicorns today. And thousands of fintechs have raised millions of dollars. But are they actually making a value which they should have made? Yeah. I would like to start with an example. Sure. That from my apartment complex in Bangalore, there are seven people at Global Fintech Festival. Okay. I never imagined that this thing will happen. Okay, okay so... Obviously, like everybody and their uncle is here, I okay. feel. Did you spot them in the lift also? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I just came across half of them. I didn't even know that they are in the fintech space or they have anything to do with fintech. So largely what, what I'm trying to say is that they, it looks like with all the hype and hoopla in the last several years, too many people who have, who have entered into the fintech space, good or for bad. I think from an investor perspective, let's start from there, right? So... I was seeing 20, 25 companies a month um, for last so many years, um, evaluated you know, from an investment perspective. Now that number has gone down to 10. I think all the tourist entrepreneurs, so to say, as they use the term, are gone. Tourist entrepreneur. Interesting. Go right. ahead. <laughs> now the serious guys are there. But even then, the problem is most of the companies that we see are like 600th wealth management platform, you know, 500th B2B payments platform. Incremental innovation is happening, but not like transformational stuff we are not seeing. And, uh, you know, we are sitting at GFF, the regulators involved in that. It may not be the best thing to say, but uh, I feel like, you know, somebody has to say it that the regulatory, you know, our regulators are very progressive. They have done great things. You know, also, uh, you know, quite uh, thankful to them. But it's also a very clear message that you have to play by the book. Yes. This is the book you should do things according to this book, right? Either you are a TSP or you are a regulated entity. Uh, there's nothing in between or outside of it. Which means that if you play by the book, then there will be no innovation, innovation as such, right? Exactly. Because you have to tick all the boxes from where you live in it. Right. And Amul, you have been in fintech space as long as I have been. You have seen the first 5-10 years of fintech innovation was because there was regulatory arbitrage. That's where the regulated twilight, as we call it, it's neither dark and it's neither very bright, right? Somewhere in the middle. At least in the beginning, you know, uh, innovation stifles if, if you don't, if that is not there. So, there may be multiple factors. I think also now investors are not as bullish on fintech as they used to be. And a lot oh, of VCs are... Yeah. interesting statement. So, so, so let's, let's, let's make it a conclusion here. Because the regulators involved into the innovation scheme, the innovation is not happening. <laughs> is it so? It is... It to is some extent, yes. It is challenging. Like, I, I, I think extent, yes. absolutely it's very hard to say anything. Like, obviously, there are a lot of innovative things happening. Uh, but it looks like the early stage, which I represent, I'm very biased towards early stage startups. You know this, right? For being a founder myself, that zero to in journey, I've done it a couple of times and then investing. I feel that space is facing a lot of pressure and I'm not seeing innovation stifling a little bit in that space. So, obviously, regulators have its own agenda. Uh, they have their own challenges and they have their own rule book, which they want to follow. The simple yes. point is customer education should be there and there should not be any betrayal with the customers. And right. when you directly are participating with the money of the people, a regulator will involve. Yes. But coming back to what you said, regulatory arbitrage or whatever the, maybe uh, the dark lines yeah. or there were no lines which, you know, fintechs yeah. thought they could draw. Right. Despite this fact, why so many people are here? Why so many people are coming? Seven people, six people from your apartment itself. Yeah. So without naming a bank, they had a couple of sessions. And so I think there are like hundreds of employees of that bank here. <laughs> right? Then multiply that by all the banks which are there. Okay. Um, then all the institutions which are sort of sponsoring this event are that. Obviously, all the fintech startups. I think if you're a fintech startup today in this country and you're not here, <laughs> then... You know, yes. like you're missing so out. Is it a FOMO factor? The, it's, it seems like that. There is a little bit of that as well. Like, I'll, I'll give you a different angle, right? I don't like, I don't like the word Okay, FOMO, let's not label but it. But yes. organically, I'll tell you. So, there were 
I actually uh, graduated out of Symbiosis Institute of Telecom Management. So Symbiosis is a specialized telecom management course. Um, and it was one of the sort, most sought after during that time when the telecom buzz was. It was the sunrise sector back then. So I had colleagues basically pass out of that and then went to telecom companies and West companies. I just met a bunch of them today at GFF because they have all come to FinTech. Okay. So look, the sunrise sector was telecom, then it became something else. Today, and at least for a while now, it has been FinTech. In financial services. So obviously, you know, now you can we can say FOMO or whatever it is, but I think that's what is happening. Yes, so, so we can also put it differently, right? We can label it different. So people are looking at this sector with big hopes, yeah. right? People are also looking at this sector with perhaps, uh, perhaps a next maybe a game changer sector, right? But on that part, I have a different question. Uh, what has happened till now? I have seen lots of people have raised billions of dollars. Last year itself, they raised $25 billion, right? But when you look at that size, we have the companies which has an asset huge size, right? If you look at the traditional companies. Yeah. But when you look at this fintechs, $25 billion gaya ki there. Yeah. Many of them are not profitable. Many of them are still developing projects. Right. So where did this money go? Did we create the value or just the valuation? So it's a fund, Amolji, right? So as an investor, having been investing in last two, three years, this is something I've understood, right? This is a quiet taste, as they call it, right? Um, it's like sushi, right? It's a quiet taste. One thing I've understood is that um, all this funding which is happening from an investor perspective is 10 years out. So when, let's say, any of us are investing, we are thinking that this company will become a phone pay. So the investment is not for today and you will not see the results today. You'll probably see it in you know that period of time. Second thing is, there's a, it's a, quite a bit of gamble. Nobody knows anything, right? What will happen to any company? Yes. There are 100 reasons because of which a company will fail. Their founders fight, 40% of the companies fail because founders fight yes. and, and you know, the company goes down. Yes. Then there are regulatory issues. There's this issues, there is taxation. Oh, there are like hundreds of issues. The technology becomes obsolete and all that. Yes. So now we are all betting because we are saying like, if we make 25 bets, 25 investments, maybe two of them, five of them, 10 of them will succeed. Right, a lot of them will fail. Uh -huh. So, which means that the numbers that you are quoting, right, 20, 25 million dollars, yeah. a lot of it will go down. Yes. I think there is no uh, good scientific way to say that, okay, over the last 10 years, uh -huh. this is the amount of money which got invested and this is the amount of value which was created in terms of revenues, profits and all that. Uh -huh. But if somebody was to do a very good analysis of that, uh -huh. you will figure out that net-net it will be positive only. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, as an investor, when you meet the fintech founders, young founders wearing that, you know, the round neck t-shirts and jeans and coming to you and says, Amit bhai paisa de do with a million dollars. So when you sign a check, yeah. you know, what do you see? Do you see Konal Shah, Samir Nigam, or Innovation? So actually, if somebody comes and asks me one million dollars, I basically send them to somebody better. <laughs> Because uh, we put very small checks. Yes. Um, I think from my perspective, uh, so did you absolutely are right. The bed is not on the the ground on which the race is happening. The bed is not on the horse. The bed is on the jockey. So you're absolutely correct, right? It is it is about the founder and the founding team. There we are actually looking for two three things. One is. Is this like something, you know, like six months back, something else was hot and now something else is hot. So maybe this person just uh, is very opportunistic. So he's looking at this opportunity. Or is this like a problem that he has lived or she has lived with? Or it's a personal problem that they have faced, right? Then, you know, you know that they are passionate and they'll try to solve this problem over a 10 year period. Second thing is, are they open? Uh, like, you know, you should, people say that you should be married to the problem not to the solution. Yes. Because today the solution may be something else. Tomorrow, you may actually develop a much better solution if you keep attacking the problem, thinking about it in different ways and are open to all the external ideas and everything. So we look at that. We look at also tenacity, hard work, sincerity. Yes. Um, and and so, you know, absolutely like 60% of the bet is actually on the phone. Then we also look at other things, you know, such as the market, the economics in that. Now I've done like 33 investments, so I also know what has worked, what has not worked in the past. Like there are sectors which just doesn't work in India. Noted your points, Amit. So my last question is specifically about the future. What next is the question? So thousands of people are coming to the GFF. 
few of them are coming from your you know apartment itself and as we discussed you know sunrise sector was telecom but now fintech is a sector where people have lots of hopes so considering all these points you know who's going to be the next maybe kunal shah amrish rao or samir nigam where are you going to bet your money how do you see you know the founders or the whole fintech combination shaping up uh, i would say a little something which is not digestible that easily but artificial intelligence right buzzword uh, and all that but the reality is that i have been building in that for last 5 6 months one thing i am realizing is every piece of software and every piece of saas which has been written in the past is under attack now is going to be rewritten so the next kunal shah or next uh, you know amrish that you are talking about could very well be amul dete because now with so somebody build a split wise app if you know split wise app in 10 minutes using cloud 3.5 and cursor so one new llm and then you know basically an app with that they were able to build a complete app in 10 minutes if that starts happening then every anybody who has an idea let's say you have a content distribution platform idea tomorrow or you have a social media app idea tomorrow if you are able to build something very easily everybody is a programmer from idea to actually execution is possible now so the next entrepreneur who makes it big could be anyone that is what i am excited about okay okay idea programs matters the most okay noted your points amit thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and being part of this conversation thank you so much thanks amul thank you and thank you so much for watching etbfsi.com